Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to New Beginnings Church. It's good to have you with us. Would you stand with me as we open this morning in prayer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for this day. I thank you, Lord, that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you woke us up this morning. I thank you, God, that we are alive to worship you and bring you pleasure. God, I thank you, Lord, Father God, that you have plans for us to prosper and succeed and never to fail. And I thank you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name for your manifest presence, Father God, to fall in this place. I pray, Lord, that we would feel the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit that would come and would change every life, Father Father God, and move and minister to every heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Can we say that, shout that together, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good and he is good to me, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
Turn, he shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Hallelujah, Jesus.
say, Jesus, Jesus, you're my victory. Jesus, you're my victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Jesus, you're my victory. Jesus, you're my victory. For the battle belongs to you. power that is within us. Thank you, Jesus, for victory. Thank you, Lord, for glory after glory, triumph after triumph. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is my victory. Jesus is my victory. For the ashamed. We can lift our heads high. You're so good. You're so good, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. Lord. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Well, this should be a well-rested group. Because you got an extra hour of sleep. Unless you're like me, and you factor that in, and the night before you end up just staying up later, because you're like, you know what, I got an extra hour of sleep. And then you didn't reap the benefit of it at all. But anyway, it's so good to be in God's house this morning. I asked Pastor Christy and Kate to have a seat because we want to share some announcements this morning, but we also want to share a testimony this morning of, what, of God's faithfulness this past week. And, um, and I don't know how long I might be because, man, there's a lot to tell. But God has been so good. But before we get to that, just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, first of all, again, connect cards. Use them. God's doing something. God's moving. When we pray, I hope you pray like I pray with expectation. And so we appreciate every prayer request we get turned in, but we want to know when the answers come. We want to know when God moves and does something. Even if you didn't write the prayer request on a card, tell us what God's doing. Because that's one way we, our faith is, is, is built up. That's one way that, that we pray with expectation because we say, God, if you did it, And the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you did it yesterday, you can do it today, and I can believe in it for tomorrow. So your testimonies, when you talk about them, you may say, oh, what what does anybody care about my story? It matters. Your story matters. And we want to know about them. So please use those to share phone numbers, emails, prayer requests, but also use them for praise reports. And one of the things that's been really neat to watch over the last few weeks at prayer, we have prayer here every Tuesday. The church is open from 12 to 1 and from 7 to 8. Drop in if you want. Pray if you're at work at that time. Agree with us at prayer. But one of the things we've been doing is we've been going through the prayer cards, and when one's been answered or something's happened, in, in, you know, t- t- for that, that an answer to prayer, we've been just writing a prayer answered or praise the Lord or whatever, and we've been piling them up in the middle of the, of the communion table here at Tuesday prayer. And I'm going to tell you, man, it's exciting to get that, see that pile getting bigger. Yeah. It's exciting to see that pile getting bigger. Now, some people would say, does that mean the other pile's getting smaller? Not necessarily. Because what happens is, when people start seeing that God does answer prayer, people start praying for more things. So I'm okay with the the list of prayers getting bigger, because that means there's more opportunity for God to show himself mighty, and that answered stack to get bigger and bigger as well. Amen? Amen. If you're watching online and you've got prayer requests, share them in the comments. Be glad to pray for those as well. Tonight, 6 o'clock p.m. service, I want to invite you to come out for that. Listen, we need more of God's word, not less. More of God's word, not less. You're going through a hard time. I, I, I've never experienced this personally, but I've heard that some people, when they're going through hard times, they eat. Maybe that's you. You know, uh, you, know you, see it, you see it in all the movies, you know, the, the, the Hallmark-type movies. The girl breaks up with the guy or whatever, and she sits down, and she eats two gallons of ice cream because she's upset. You know, the guy, you know, something happens, and he eats, you know, a whole pizza because he's upset or whatever. Listen, if you're going through a hard time, you need to feed yourself with more of God's word. First of all, it's calorie-free, okay? So it won't affect your waistline. Second of all, it'll help you in what you're going through. So if you're sitting home and you're saying, man, our world is going to hell in a handbasket. My family's a mess. My this is that and my other is not what I want it to be. More of God's word is what we need to get in us. So come out tonight, 6 o'clock. We're actually, we're studying uh, end time prophecy and stuff, but we're just doing a great, it's just a great encouragement to know that no matter what goes on, God's in control and he's coming back. Amen? Friday night, Paradigm Youth, 7 o'clock. 
All right, great things happening with Paradigm. Yesterday, we had a fall cleanup day. I don't know if you walked in here. You know, it smelled cleaner. Maybe it didn't. I don't know, uh, but it, it did to me. But we had a great fall cleanup yesterday. A lot of things accomplished here around the church. Uh, if you couldn't make it, this is not a guilt trip, okay? I read my Bible. God doesn't function in guilt trips, okay? I'm just telling you what God's, what, what's happening around here, but also to say there's a couple of jobs we still need help with if you couldn't make it yesterday, Number one, if you know an electrician or you are good with electricity and you know how to install an outlet, see me after service. We need an outlet taken care of because uh, we, we, we have to put a new disposal in and um, we can't move forward without having something to plug into uh, in the kitchen downstairs. Secondly, uh, we took out all the broken screens and all the windows yesterday and we need to put new screens in. So if maybe you've got some time, you've got the patience for that kind of a job, you don't have to do it at church, I'll give you the supplies, take it home, work at it in your garage, bring back the screen so we can pop them back in the windows and have that taken care of as well. Um, but again, lots of stuff happened around here yesterday. Man, we had, such, we had such a good week, I don't even mind the poison ivy that I got, um, clearing out that fell tree, the tree that fell over there. Um, apparently, we didn't realize it when Joshua and I were working on that this week, we both got poison something. Uh, so, but praise Lord for, for steroids, uh, well, prednisone and prayer. Uh, yeah, don't mess with me today. I'm jacked up on steroids. No, it's, I got some prednisone just to help because my eye was kind of looking a little like the elephant man, um, on Thursday afternoon. But, um, so we thank God for all the things that we got done, all the things we're going to do. Uh, on behalf of Pastor Christy, myself, Joshua, thank you all for the cards and the gifts uh, for pastor appreciation. Um, just, just, just a blessing. You know, I learned something early on in ministry, and I've passed this on to every young minister I've ever met. Those cards I take, and I've got a drawer in my office where every single one of those cards goes into. If you sent me an email, it goes into there. If you, if you texted me and said something, I'll print it out, and I stick it in that drawer. Because this pastor said, you know what, there's going to be days where you're going to feel like, you know, am I, am what I doing is, do what I do, do, is what I'm doing making a difference? He says, and you pull out those cards, and you, you don't sit there and have a pity party, but you read them as an encouragement. So thank you for helping me and helping us add to that, that, that drawer. I have my own. I hope they started their own of just encouragement. It really means a lot. Um, if you complain, um, I also take those to heart if you put your name on them. If you don't, I take them to the trash, okay? Uh, but thank you for the cards. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the gifts uh, for pastor appreciation. Uh, reminder, we do have T-shirts, again, available, New Beginnings T-shirts, uh, because we are family. Uh, because of Jesus, we are family T-shirts. And I found out something this week. Really cool. Carol, where you at? Wave to me, Carol. Say hi. There's Carol over there. If you don't know Carol, that's Carol. Carol shared with me a, a, a book she has where she writes testimonies. And she shared with me last week, she said, Pastor, just take time and read this. She's got her book. She's writing down her testimonies. And, um, and what I didn't know was that Carol came to the Lord because of Lorraine DiGiulio and her husband 50 years ago. 50 years ago, they let, they, they let her to the Lord. So when we talk about this idea of family, we're not just talking, you know, just, oh, we just, you know, we go to the same building for a couple of hours on Sunday. We're talking, there's some real family connections that are here, and we hope to continue to develop those kind of connections here at New Beginnings Church. Amen? Amen. Uh, this week has been a great week at New Beginnings. Uh, ladies' night out last Wednesday, they had a great time. Friday night, Paradigm hosted a tea party. Uh, for the ladies, for the young ladies, and a lot of, lot of fellowship there, and they heard a powerful testimony about staying true, to convic staying true to their convictions. So there's stuff happening. Even if you don't know about everything going on, it's still happening. And we thank God for, for the ministries and the people that are stepping up to lead and to serve at New Beginnings. Um, but now I want to tell you what happened last Monday. Many of you know last Monday was our court date. And before I go any further, I want, I want to share a scripture verse with you. And, and Pastor Christy texted me this verse. I think it was either uh, late Saturday night or early, su early, late Sunday night or early Monday morning. She texted me this verse. 
And it's Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16. And it says this. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself stepped in to save them with his strong arm and his justice sustained him. And so she shared that verse with me. And, and that's, that's the verse I, I woke up Monday morning early because it was like, I don't want to be late. I want to be there early. Um, honestly, I don't spend a lot of time at the courthouse. Um, so I had to make sure I was going to the right place. So a little backstory. Go back to December of 2015. That property, the church actually bought that property in 2005 and had plans for it. I wasn't here. I don't know all the plans. I don't know all the conversations, but it was bought for a purpose. Those purposes didn't pan out, so fast forward a few years, and the, the decision was made to sell the property. So in December of 2015, a contract was entered into to sell that property with a closing date of October 1st of 2016. Now, some of you may say that's a long gap between signing and closing. And the reason was there were some contingencies that had to be taken care of. They had to get the, the person that bought it was a developer. They wanted to put some homes on that property. They, they wanted to make sure they had approval from the county to go ahead and build that. Um, at some point in the past, some stone had been put down over there to um, help with, with driving on that and or parking. And the church was going to be required to remove that stone um, for the sale of the property to go forward. I'm not telling you anything that's not public record, okay? This is just out there in, in, in public record. So, um, so that was December 2015, December of 20, October of 2016 comes and goes. Um, nothing happens with the sale of the property. At that time, um, right around that closing time, there was a leadership transition here at New Beginnings. And the district stepped in and, and took over um, as, to help lead the church through that time of transition we don't know what happened again. We weren't here. We didn't get here till 2017. So all of this precedes us. We just know when we got here, the district said, what do you want to do with that property? Do you want to sell it or keep it? How many know my answer? It was keep it. It was keep it. I don't know what, what God had in store, but you know, my grandmother raised me. Property, if you've got it, hold on to it. Especially when there's nothing else around us. So we said, we'd like to keep it. And, and, and also because, you know, financially, it wasn't going to be a gain for the church to sell it at that point. Property values had changed and stuff. So we get sued. The church is sued by the developer saying that we did not fulfill our part of the agreement, and they're suing us for the property. We have a lawyer that works with the district. He's also a minister. We, sh we talk about our case. He says, I believe we have a case. Because our case simply was this, that there was a deadline of October 1st, 2015, 2016. And when that deadline passed, the contract was void. Their argument was slightly different, so it had to go before a judge. So for four and a half years since we've been here, it's been going back and forth, back and forth. Finally, the day comes, we go to court, and we walk in there, and, and, and their lawyer walks in with three notebooks of notes and papers that's a foot high. And our lawyer walks in, and he's got a notebook that's this big. Because <laughs> our argument was a simple one. The date passed. Their argument was that we had not done our due diligence of taking care of certain responsibilities. In the interim, um, we just prayed. I wasn't here. I don't know what was said or not said in the meetings. I don't know what was said or not said in the discussions involving the sale of the property. Uh, we just prayed. We said, God, we believe that the contract, what it says, means we have, that the property is still ours and we want to keep it. But as you know, sometimes with courts, you just never know how things are going to play out. So we go to court on Monday, and um, 
go through all the preliminaries. I asked the judge, I said, you know, should I tell my people? Some people had asked about maybe coming and being there. He goes, no. He goes, there's going to be, the, ju- the lawyer said, there's just going to be a lot of legal talk in a case like this that people will just be confused. It's just, just tell them to stay home and pray. By the way, he says, thank you for praying, our lawyer. And he said, I got to come visit your church. I want to meet those people. He goes, and he said, I need to hang around you and your people some more because you're the kind of people that I like to, I want, I want to be around because you're encouraging. So somewhere in the, in the future, we may have our lawyer come here and, 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 and visit with us. So in the interim, um, we, we, we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. Bob Novak, our presbyter, God bless him, love him, um, he got called in for a nine-hour deposition. They, 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 nine hours of deposition all day. I never got called in for a deposition because, again, I was not part of any thing. So it was really weird for me. Do you ever find yourself in the, in the middle of something where you literally have nothing to do with it, but you're in the, completely in the middle of it? That's what I felt like. I didn't get called for a deposition. They said, we, they probably won't even call you to take the stand in court. Now, I did take the stand for like 30 seconds, um, it seemed like, um, but it was just to say, you know, because my name had popped up somewhere. You know, I just had to say I'm the lead pastor of New Beginnings, and I've been, when I've been there since, how long I've been at the church, just stuff like that. So, right before we go to lunch, there was two options. Let me back up. There was two options. And one was we win. And winning meant we keep the property. And two, we lose. And losing meant we lose the property. But there was other things that went with winning and losing. See, win or lose, we still had to pay our lawyer, right? They don't, they don't work on, you know, oh, if you win, yay. And if you lose, oh, don't worry, it's all good. He's been working on this for almost five years. So if we lose, we still have to pay our lawyer. If we win, we have to pay our lawyer. Secondly, there was the question of, the developer had put some money into developing or get to going to get permits and talking to the county. We were, we were, there was the possibility and the concern and the question of, are we going to have to pay him back if we win for those funds? Again, a win, but we're still going to have to pay out money. If we lose, we would sell the property at the asking price. From the money we received, we would have to pay to remove all the gravel that was put in that thing and bring it to level. And what we, they, they, they threw out astronomical numbers, like 40 dump trucks full of dirt coming in, like $25,000 to do that. So we would sell the property, subtract all the money to, to, to do that. Then we would have to take the money that was left to pay the mortgage company to release the lien on the property so the seller could have it. Some of you are like, I don't understand what you're saying. Basically, we were going to make like, like a few bucks on the sale of the property. That was the reason we wanted to keep it. There was no benefit. So that's if we lose, you know, we still had to deal with all that stuff. So we go to court. And right before lunch, there was a, there was a third party that was involved um, and they came to us and they said, we'd like to offer you a settlement to, to be released from the court proceedings. And they offered our lawyer a number, and I'm not at liberty to disclose those numbers, but they offer, and our lawyer said, no, he counteroffers. They come back, they say, yes, we settle with the third party before lunch, or right after lunch on Monday, and they leave, and they're out, of the, they're out of the suit. It doesn't change still what's going on with the property. It was a third party that was involved. So we settle and go through the rest of the trial. End of the case is, 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 is upon us. The judge is going to make a ruling. How many like court shows on TV? Yeah, don't go to court. It's nothing like court shows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There was no, like, you know, objection, Your Honor, overrule. You can't handle the truth. None of that stuff. Okay? Just a lot of sitting there and staring. And I just sat there. I just prayed. 
I just prayed in the spirit. I just prayed in the spirit. And we get to the end, and the judge starts talking, and he's saying things, and I have no idea what he's saying. Think Charlie Brown's teacher. He's going, wah, 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 wah. And I'm like, but then he starts saying things, and my ears perk up. And like, he's saying things that sound like good things for us. He's saying things that sound like this ruling might be going in our favor. And just as I start getting that sense, Bob Novak, and again, many of you know Bob Novak. He's, he was the presbyter for our, for our, for our district that, that helped us through the transition. He's been here. His church was a tremendous blessing to us. Uh, when, when, when we owed the taxes on the property when we first came and they were going to auction off the property and we didn't have the money, his church stepped up and gave us money towards paying off that tax bill. And Bob is sitting here and I'm sitting to Bob's left and the defense is over on far to the right, and we're right behind our lawyer, and he starts saying stuff, and Bob gets the same idea I'm getting, like, this is sounding good, and all of a sudden, I see out of the corner of my eye, Bob goes like this. <laughs> like, like, yes. Judge's final ruling. He says, I rule in favor of the defendant. That's us. He says, I rule in favor of the defendant. And I'm like... Wow. <laughs> five, five, almost five years for us and, and, and seven almost for you guys. If you've been here, he says, I rule in favor of the defendant. And you don't, you know, again, there's no jumping up and cheering again, like in court and stuff like that in the movies and stuff like that. We're just very stoic because it's almost like you don't want to breathe. Because I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. So he says, right. <laughs> Like, is there, are we being punked here? Is this candid camera? You know, what's good? So he says, my ruling is for the defendant. He says, the plaintiff shall receive in return the $10,000 that they had put down in escrow. We didn't have that money. The bank had that money. They were just holding it while the sale was, was in limbo. He says, you'll receive that, and that's the ruling of this court. And the defense, the lawyer for the other side says, well, will we get back the money that we, that we had spent? We had, we had submitted an itemized list. And the judge says, you're getting what I said you're getting and no more. Court is adjourned. And he hit the gavel. <laughs> I'm serious. This is, you're kind of like, what? That's how I was. The lawyer says, move quickly, pack everything up. <laughs> Don't look around, don't breathe, just get everything into the box, and let's get out of here. So we get out of there, we get in the elevator, and I said, David, I said, I don't speak lawyer, so explain this to me. We won, right? He goes, yeah. I said, okay, I got that. I said, so that means the property's ours. They're getting their, their money, their escrow back. That had nothing to do with us. We don't owe them any extra money that they put out. Plus, we have the settlement from the other party, which we can use to pay you. <laughs> and, and still maybe have something left over, he goes, that's it in a nutshell. He goes, everything we could have hoped and asked for and wanted <laughs> happened. Now, listen, I, I don't know what that final number is going to be, uh, whatever it is it is, you know, at this point, you know, and, and already somebody's like, well, Pastor Ben, what are we building over there? <laughs> I'm like, let me, you know, let me, let's enjoy this. <laughs> you know, I'm learning that here. One of the things I've learned over the last four years is enjoy what God is doing. Celebrate the victories. Like we just sang that song, I'm going to see a victory. We've seen a victory, and we need to celebrate victories and not always be ready to move on to the next thing. You know, it's like the day we brought Benjamin home from the hospital. It's like, oh, he's so cute. Great. When's the next one? <laughs> no, we, 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 we celebrated. We, we, we laughed. We held. We savored. We need to just celebrate what God has done. And, and whatever is going to happen, you know, what it, it, whatever God wants to do, that's what we want to do. Unless the Lord will build a house, they that labor, labor in vain. And that's what we're going to do. 
I don't, again, I don't know. It could be next week. God brings something to us. It could be next month. I don't know what it is. But we had to get through this to be able to go to the next thing. Joshua had to win at the Battle of Jericho before they could go on to the next thing. And so let's celebrate as a church what God has done. Let's celebrate as a church what God has done. This is something, look, and if you're new here to the church, you may, you may say, so what's the big deal? It's a big deal. Imagine being pregnant for four and a half years, ladies. And you're just like, is there, is there a due date? Maybe. And that's what they did to us. They said, we, we, you know, when are we going to go to court? Someday. And then we got back in October. They said, you have the first two weeks of November as a window. And so we're waiting and waiting. And then they finally, November 1st. You know what the crazy thing is? My daughter shared this with me. November 1st is turning into a special day for New Beginnings. This November 1st, that was settled. Last November 1st is when we paid off that second mortgage that we had on the property, and we celebrated paying off that second mortgage. And listen, I want you to understand this. When I say we, this is not me and my pastor. This is we. This is we. And if you're watching online and you, you were a part of that, you're included in that we, in that celebration. If you've walked any part of this journey this victory is something for you to celebrate. Again, whether you're in this room or watching online, this is something for all of us to celebrate. Look what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and he's not done. He's not done. Is there anything my God cannot do? Is there anything my God cannot do? I'm surprised I didn't break down in tears because uh, every time I tell the story in the last, that song we just sang, she doesn't know it. But as I left the courthouse, that's the song I had playing in the car. That's the song that I, I, I just rolled the windows down and I had it blaring. <laughs> Look what the Lord has done, church. And he's not done. We serve a supernatural God. You look around this property, and you, if you say that there is no God and that God doesn't care, I don't even want to say what you are. But stick around, because he's not done. He's not done. He's not done. Favor, provision, grace, as we're going through the challenges, he's not done. So I want you to stand to your feet right now. And right now, there's something, you may, something you've been going through, something you've been praying for. Listen, God's not done. God's not done. God's not done. But I will tell you this, that Scripture tells me that there's some things we have to do. Scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We've got to come to a place where we say God first. And when we put God first, everything else comes second. And when everything else comes second, we don't have to worry about everything else because God's going to take care of and look after us in all those other areas. We just have to be obedient to God. So as you're praying for that unsaved loved one, as you're praying for that, that, that difficult situation to work out, I ask one question. Is God first? Is God first? Because if he is, then believe he's a rewarder, as the scriptures say, of those who diligently seek him. He will show himself faithful, church. He's done it. He's done it. Roof on the parsonage. We didn't have the money. Done. Roof on this building. The money wasn't in the bank account until a $20,000 check came in from somebody and said, no strings attached, do whatever you need to do with it. Roof on the church, done. Building smelt. We found out there was a cracked sewer pipe. They had to cut cement, dig seven feet down below the foundation of the building, found it, fixed it. God provided a way. We didn't have lights in the parking lot. God sent us and blessed us with the right person at the right time to get lights in the parking lot. The floor in the lobby, we got it done because God made a way. Your people in this room, you know God has healed. God has provided. God has saved. God is moving. He's not done. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you in the name of Jesus. 
God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for all that you have done. God, we thank you, God, for the physical things that have been provided for. But God, that is only a part of the story. God, you're also moving in the spiritual lives and the spiritual needs of people in this church and in this community, Father. God, I thank you that you're a provider, but you're also a healer. I thank you, God, that you're a healer, but God, first and foremost, you're a savior, Jesus. And God, we put you first. God, we commit as a church body, as a family, that we as a, as a community and as individuals, God, God, we are going to live out Matthew 6.33. We are going to seek first the kingdom of God. We're going to put you first. And when we do that, you'll take care of all the other things, Father. God, use us in this year ahead, Father. As we wrap up this year and head into a new year, God. God, let it be a season, Lord God, of seed planting like never before. God, let it be a season of harvest, God, the likes of which individually and corporately we have never experienced before. God, I thank you for the, the answer that to, to our prayers for this court case. But God, we're going to celebrate it. But God, we're also going to expect there's more to come. Because you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or want or imagine, Father. And we thank you for that, Lord. We praise you for that, Father, in Jesus' name and for your glory. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 You know what amen means, right? Amen means so be it unto me. So be it. So when we pray something and you say amen, you're saying, God, yep, that's for me. God, that's for me. When you read a scripture verse and you say amen after a scripture verse is ready, you're saying, God, that's for me. That's for me. You're taking possession. You're taking ownership. You're grabbing hold of it. And again, like I said, I don't know what tomorrow holds with that. But that's okay. We're going to praise God today. We're going to praise God today. Because the devil would love nothing more than to, for us to have a victory and then just get caught up in another problem. But you know what? Praise brings breakthrough. Praise brings breakthrough. Amen. Pastor Christy, Kate, why don't you guys come on up here? They're going to begin to lead us in worship again. I, the song you have, I'm giving everything to God. I know we're singing that. And some people are like, that's funny. She sings that during, during the offering. Because offering is, is just one way we give back to God. And we say, thank you, God, for what you've done. I had a great conversation with someone this week. And I said that giving is more about obedience than anything else. You know, we think, oh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm stuffing God's pockets with my change. No, we're being obedient to God. And obedience brings blessing. Yes. And I want you to walk in blessing. I want you to walk in blessing. So I want you to be a people that give, that, that bring the tithe, that bring the offering, and walk in the promises of God. Because when we give everything to God, God takes care of us. We give everything to God, God takes care of us. Father, thank you for your faithfulness again. God, as we worship through giving, Lord, in this, in this scenario, it's, it's giving of our tithe or our offering, God. Others, it's giving of time, and sometimes we give of our talents, God, when we sow, we reap, and we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you as you worship through your giving. What kind of joy can make me dance? What kind of love can make me sing? What kind of grace is all I need? Jesus is everything I'm giving everything to God I'm giving everything to God I'm giving everything to God He's giving everything to me I'm giving everything to God I'm giving everything to God I'm giving everything to God He's giving everything to me There's so much joy There's so much love There's so much grace Hallelujah, there's so much joy, there's so much love, there's so much grace.
Hallelujah, I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. Giving everything to God, He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. There's so much joy, there's so much love, there's so much grace. Hallelujah. There's so much joy, there's so much love, there's so much grace. Hallelujah, I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. Giving everything to God, He's given everything to me. Hallelujah! We serve a mighty God, amen. The Bible says that everything is His, so when we give of what we have, it's His anyway. And we know that as we give, the whole Bible principles give and you shall receive, amen. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. I'm giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life. You brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. You brought me from the darkness to glorious lives. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. name. There to my heart was the blood. that is in you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You're such a good God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just say thank you to Jesus, church. There's something you got... There's something you're thankful for this morning. Let's just take time to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Thank you, God, that the, the, the latter rain shall be greater than the former. That, Lord, you said in the last days you're going to pour out your Spirit on all flesh. God, our sons and daughters, I'll prophesy, God. God, the older shall dream dreams, Father. Lord, if there's breath in our lungs, God, there's purpose for our life today. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you are still in the business of using, the, of using your creation, people, us, to do your work. God, now is not the time for us to shrink back. Now is not the time for us to take, take a vacation. God, your return is, is closer now than ever before. And Father, I pray that we would be about the Father's business like never before. God, I pray that individually, God, we would live out our faith in such a way that people will take notice and ask us for the hope that is within us. God, I pray that as a church, Father, we would step up and take opportunity to minister, Lord God, to, to not just the members of New Beginnings, the family that is New Beginnings, but the communities that surround us, Father. God, we want spiritual direction, spiritual wisdom. We want supernatural favor. Because, God, the task that is ahead of us, though it may seem overwhelming, is not impossible when we go forth with the Spirit of the living God inside of us and empowering us, Father. Your Word said that, Father. You shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and you shall be filled with power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. God, let us be empowered by your Holy Spirit. Let our worship, God, be pleasing to you. Let our lives be a living sacrifice to you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we praise you. We exalt you. Thank you, God, for making us sons and daughters because of what Jesus did on the cross, because of the blood that was shed and the tomb that was left empty. We've become sons and daughters of the Most High. We are heirs and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Those of us in this room who in any other situation, in any other place, God, would be enemies at odds, despising one another. But because of the blood of Jesus, we're family. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that. I thank you, God, for my brothers and sisters in Christ in this room, watching online, worshiping in other, other churches and other places of worship today, Father. They know Jesus as Savior. The Bible is their standard, God. They're my brother. They're my sister in Christ. And I thank you for them today, God. I pray your blessing on, on other churches, Lord God, in this community that are, that, are, that are about the Father's business. I pray that every need they have would be met, Father. I pray provision for them, Father. God, I pray that their ministries would not be hindered because of lack. Lord, not a lack of help, not a lack of, 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 of energy and talent not a lack of provision or finance. God, I pray that the church of Jesus Christ, Lord, would have everything it needs to complete its purpose, Father, in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do through the rest of our time together, through the preaching and the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just a couple of things I wanted to say before Pastor Christy comes, give her a chance to wet her whistle over there for a little bit. First of all, I want to just re remind you and say that, that this week is Veterans Day, Thursday, I believe it is. And if you're here and you're a veteran, if you served, uh, we just want to say thank you for your service uh, to our country. Amen. If, you, if you're a veteran, stand up. Stand up. We've got veterans all over the room here. Amen. Thank you. And I encourage you, you know, thank them for what they do. You know what? Don't let politics get in the way. They, they, give, they give their time, they give their, their life to serve, to protect um, you and your freedoms and my freedoms. And so if you get a chance this week, you know, say thank you to a veteran, reach out to someone. I also want to say that in that idea of, of blessed to be a blessing, and that's what we are as a church, we're blessed to be a blessing. Um... I'll be completely honest with you, with everything going on, coming up with the court case, it kind of got away from me. I wanted to announce it last week and totally forgot. But with Thanksgiving just a couple of weeks away, if you or someone you know 
has a need for Thanksgiving help, you know, you talk to someone and they're not having Thanksgiving because, you know, the turkey's too expensive, they can't this, they can't that, uh, please let us know. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. Number one, you can email us or message us through social media if that's how you choose to communicate. You can call the church office and leave a message. Make sure you leave your name and your phone number. Or you can fill out, use one of the connect cards. And again, we need a contact information. Uh, and it's for, if it's for you, great. We want to bless you. If it's for someone you know, we want to bless them with you as our connecting point. So it's not a thing of, you know, they're going to come here, pick up, we'll help get the stuff. You're the connection. We want to put it in your hands, and we want you to go and, and, and deliver it, pray for that family, connect with that family um, in any way that you can, and, and, and we want to help facilitate you ministering to the people that are maybe in your neighborhood or in your own personal family that may have need. And, and again, let us know within the next you know, week to 10 days so we can coordinate and get all those things together, okay? Uh, last but not least, we're going to let the kids go. Uh, I know uh, Sarah and, and Miss Lillian are excited uh, to have the kids um, today, working on some, some cool stuff, so all the kiddies can head on downstairs. And Pastor Christy, if you're ready, bring the word. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in God's house. I'm excited to talk to you about what God has laid on my heart. He's so good and so faithful. I love him. With all my heart. If you can't tell by my worship, I love him. There's times when I'm practicing for worship and I'm up here crying and just enjoying being in the presence of God. Because I love him. Amen. Amen. If I was to put a title to my message this morning, it would be expectation and declaration. Expectation and declaration. Big words. We're going to break it down for you. We're going to make it simple. Um, first, first, I want to read with you is found in Job chapter 22, verse 28. If you would turn there. Job. It's right before Psalms. Job 22 and verse 28. <clears throat> it says... You will also decree a thing. Some versions say declare a thing. There, there, that's where the word declaration comes from. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. And not just any light, but God's light. See, one of the reasons why God had 40 men sit down, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and write this book was not so it could sit on your shelf, not so that you could carry it back and forth to church and just open it when you come on Sunday mornings, not, be, not for you just to look at, you know, read the Christmas story out of at Christmas time. God gave us his word because his word is what he has actually declared over us. I said this the last time I, I got up in front of you. Creation was God declaring things into being, saying things, and it was. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God gave us that power through the cross and Jesus Christ so that we could also say things and then be. Faith is, I believe God's word is going to happen in my life. Not I hope so. Cross your fingers. Maybe. I know it's going to happen. 
The whole thing with the land. God gave me a, a story in the Bible where it said if God's given us the land, it's back in Judges chapter 11, if God's given us the land, we're not giving it up. God gave it to us, we're keeping it. And I declared that every time I prayed over that land. God gave it to us, we're keeping it. It's ours. Hallelujah. It's time the people of God that have the word of God at their disposal start declaring over their lives the promises of God over their lives. There are over 7,000 promises of God in the Bible. And not one of them will ever be yours until you say it and believe it and stand on it, declare it, and expect it to happen. This is your promised land. Just like God promised the people of Israel and Joshua, you're going to possess the land. You're, this is, it's your land. They had to do something to possess it. They had to go in and take it. When you say something in the word of God, that's you using the power, your sword. This is also called the sword of the spirit. Your sword to defeat the enemy and possess your land. I'm tired. God's tired of people that call themselves by the name of Jesus, that call themselves Christians, that are worn and weary and not possessing their land. God says it's there. Take it. And they're like the ten spies that were like, oh, we're like grasshoppers. We can't do it. It's just not possible. God says it's possible. If he says it's possible, it's possible. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I use all kinds of things to mark passages in my Bible, so it's full of stuff. And I took a bunch of it out, but what are you going to do? Praise God. Turn over to Mark chapter 11. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, one of the four Gospels. Mark 11. Praise the Lord. You can have what you say. Not just what you pray, but what you say. If you speak in faith, if you say, I'm going to agree with God, you can have what you say. Starting with verse 22, Mark 11, 22. Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. 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 Sometimes if you repeat things, it gets into people's spirits. I wasn't trying to annoy you. But if you say it more than once, it's important. That's important. What are you saying when you wake up in the morning? What are you saying when you're going through your day? How are you speaking over your life? Are you speaking victory or are you speaking defeat? Are you speaking blessing or are you cursing yourself by the words of your mouth? What are you saying? He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. If you say, I have pain, you will have pain. If you say, I'm the healed of the Lord, you'll be the healed of the Lord. If you say, I can't afford it, I'll never have that, you won't afford it, you'll never have it. If you say, God's going to bless me, I believe in God for it, 
you're going to get it. He will have whatever he says, good or bad. I want to say good things over my life because I want good things. Amen? Turn over in your Bibles with me to James. It's towards the back of the, of the New Testament. After Hebrews, Hebrews, James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 5. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Can you put up the NLT on there so we can read that? God is a generous God. It's time we stop thinking of God as this God that's holding back on us. That word liberal in the, New, in the King James is a, a Greek word that says open hand. He's got his hands open to you. He's saying, everything I have is yours. Everything you need, I have. Just take it. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. He's not up there trying, waiting to sap people. He's not ap- up there re- ready to bang you over the head. R.W. Schambach said, people will get to heaven, and Jesus will take you to a room. Because he... R.W. Schambach saw thousands upon thousands get healed. He said, people will get to heaven, and Jesus will take you to a room. And he'll say, this is my spare parts room. And he says, God has all these spare parts that people need in this room. And he's just waiting for somebody to say, you know what, God... This knee is a bum knee. I need a new knee. And God's like, yes, I can give it to him because they said it, because they asked for it. He's waiting. He doesn't want you to struggle anymore. He wants to bless you. God is not the God of struggle. God is the God of blessing. God is a wonderful father. He's a good, good father. He wants to bless his children. But if you don't believe in the blessing of God, if you won't say it and speak it over your life, you'll never have it. You'll never have it. Open hand. I just want you to close your eyes and just think about that for a second. Just picture God. I can't do both hands right now, but just picture God with both hands open, ready to bless you, ready to to meet that need, ready to love you, ready to give you things that you can't buy in the store. Love, joy, peace. His glory, his anointing, it's all available. Jesus made it available by the cross. Just picture him with his hands open, holding that out to you. And you taking it. Take it. How do you take it? You have to say it. You have to declare it. it. You have to expect that when you declare it, it's going to happen. Because James goes on to say, That if you doubt, you won't receive anything from the Lord. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. Say no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea tossed by the wind. 
Let him not, let that man not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. Why does that man that doubts God not receive anything? Because he doesn't trust God. God wants us to trust him. We used to sing a hymn, leaning on the everlasting arms. God just wants you to lean on him and depend on him. (laughs) I hear hear somebody humming, humming, leaning on the everlasting arms. Praise God. Psalms 104. Psalms chapter 104. Verse 28, it says, what you give them, they gather in. You open your hand and they are filled with good. Remember I said open hand? There it is. Old and New Testament. No argument there. It's in in both. You open your hand. And not only give them a little crumb, they're filled with good. God wants you to be filled with his goodness. I never saw this before in the last handful of years. But if you go back to the 23rd Psalm, it talks about that my cup overflows. God doesn't just fill your cup. Because if you fill your cup with whatever your favorite drink is, that's great. But if he overflows your cup, you can share. And that's what we're meant to do anyway. We're supposed to share the goodness of God with others. Amen? God wants your cup to overflow. Say overflow. 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 Sometimes it's hard to tell by the way that people talk whether they're a Christian or not. A lot of people sound the same. They're saying the same things. But in these last days, God wants to make his people so bold that we say things and people go, huh? 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 What did you just say? He wants us to be so confident in our God that people say, really? What? He wants us to talk different. He wants us to talk different. Now, if a person is from a certain country, Let's say from Spain or make it easier, Mexico, both the same languages. What language would they speak if they were from that country? Spanish. If they're from that country, they would speak Spanish. The Bible talks about that we are no longer a part of the kingdom of darkness. We sang about it. We're no longer part of the kingdom of darkness, but God has made us part of the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of his kingdom, the kingdom of God. So if you're not in the kingdom of darkness, you shouldn't be speaking the same language as the people of the kingdom of darkness. You should be speaking the language of the people of the kingdom of God. And if you need to learn the language, it's right here. It's all in here. If you need to know how you're supposed to be speaking, what you're supposed to be saying, what you're supposed to be declaring over your life, it's in here. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. I don't care if you get a, get a Bible version and you listen to it. 
But you got to get it in your spirit. It's not enough for it just to stay in this book because if it stays in this book, it'll never change your life. But if it gets out of this book and gets in your spirit, it will change your life. This is not just a book. This is the power of God in print. This is the power of God to completely transform and change your life. Jesus didn't just want to save you. He wanted to change your life and make it full of blessing. He wanted your cup to overflow. He wanted you to have all 7,000 promises written in this book. Amen? Amen. And on top of reading the Bible, there's a reason why church is important too. Because you become like the people you hang around. Pastor Ben can tell when I've been on the phone with my mother. My mom and dad grew up in Texas. And when I sit down and have a conversation with my mom on the phone, I start to develop a little twang in my voice. I start to talk a little slower. I even have a hard time with that song we just sang about, thank you, Jesus, for the blood, because it says washed, and that's how my family always says it. And that's not easy to sing it, it the Southern way. I've got to actually say washed. And I've, I actually had to practice that this week. Why do I have that Southern twang when I talk to my mom? Because I'm talking to her usually for at least an hour, and over that course of the time, I fall back into that southern twang that I grew up hearing and, and, and talking because when I hung around with her, that's how I talked. You need to be in church because you need to be around people that talk this, that believe this, that speak this, that declare it over their lives, and they need to rub off on you so you stop talking like the kingdom of darkness. You need to develop a Bible twang. So that you sound like a child of God. So you sound like a daughter and a son of the Most High God. That's why you need to be in church. We're family. We'll encourage each other in our walk with the Lord. And we'll encourage, don't, don't say that about yourself. Don't speak that over your finances. Don't say that about your body. You can be healed in Jesus' name. His stripes, by his stripes you are healed. We're going to believe God for victory. We're going to believe God for you to have a raise. We're going to believe God for you to have a job. We're going to believe God for you to have a new home. We're going to believe God that, that he gives you a new knee. We're going to believe God that that pain leaves your body in Jesus' name. But you're not going to hear that if you're just hanging around with the people of darkness. When you miss church, you miss getting your Bible twang on. Don't miss church. Don't miss church. And Hebrews 10.25 says it's the best. Even more as you see the world going crazy. Even more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Gather together. Be together. Spend time with each other. We need each other. Amen? Amen. Page two. <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I'm going to repeat this. We should declare what we expect to receive. We should expect to receive what we have declared. We should declare what we expect to receive. We should expect to receive what we have declared. If we haven't declared it, we shouldn't expect it. But if we've declared it, we should expect it. 
It's the same. You can have what you say. What are you declaring over your life? What are you declaring over your life? We're going to declare some things over our lives this morning. Amen? I want you to repeat after me. I declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I declare, every single loved one of mine will come into the kingdom this year. Not one of them shall be lost. Thank you, Lord, that your love breaks every barrier. I declare by his stripes, Jesus bore for me. I was healed. If I was healed, then I am healed. Because he bore my sickness and disease, I don't have to bear it. I declare that my body belongs to Jesus. The devil has no right to touch my body. Every infirmity must go. Any sickness and disease has to cease and desist in my body. In Jesus' name, I declare life, health, strength over my physical body. I am quickened by the Spirit of God. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me and it will quicken make alive my mortal body I declare that I will live and not die and declare the glory of God I declare I have the mind of Christ my mind will think clearly. It will not be scattered. I shall have focus, be able to concentrate, and not get distracted. I declare that I hear the voice of God more clearly than I ever have before. The word of the Lord shall be plain to me. I will hear his voice in the night hours. I will have dreams and visions from the Lord. God will show me things to come. And nothing will come upon me unawares. Other than the blessing of heaven. I declare this year will be a year of sevenfold restoration of everything the enemy has stolen from my life. I will be restored in Jesus' name. I declare this year will be a year of possessing my promised land. I declare supernatural creativity over my life. New inventions, new businesses, and heaven's wisdom at my disposal. I declare this is a year of divine favor over my life. And this year will be a year of open doors. I will walk through every door God opens for me. I declare supernatural debt cancellation. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself 
to me as El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. This will be a year of breakthrough after breakthrough. I declare nothing this year will hold me back. Nothing will have a grip on me. The only thing that will have a grip on me is the Spirit of God. No addiction, no bondage will keep its hold on me. I am free in Jesus' name. I declare open doors, promotions, contracts, sales, jobs, opportunities. I rebuke stagnation. I will not spin my wheels this year. This year will be my greatest year. I declare I will be proactive. I will not procrastinate. I will finish what I start. I declare supernatural strength in my marriage. There will be no division in my family. We will be in total agreement, one accord, one purpose, one aim, one goal, one vision. I declare there shall be no barren womb, no miscarriage. Thank you, Lord, for children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. I declare I will walk in supernatural protection of God like never before. I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The angels of God shall be around me and protect me. I declare the banquet table set before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup is full and running over. I declare no plan of the enemy will prevail in my life. Every plan of the devil is being unraveled right now. I see those who lie in wait for me. I hear those who plot against me. I will not be caught unawares. If the enemy digs a ditch, he'll fall in it. I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I will condemn I'll show them to be wrong this peace righteousness security and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the Lord for his for his children this is the righteousness and vindication I have from him, I declare I belong to Jesus. I've already defeated and overcome the enemy because Jesus, who lives in me, is greater and mightier than he who is in the world. I declare I am anointed with fresh oil, the joy of the Lord will sustain me and be my strength. Out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. Let the river of God flow. I declare my eyes shall see what others do not see. 
My ears will hear what others do not hear. I have access to inside information that comes straight from the throne of God. I declare I am quickened to receive all the blessing that God has for me. I declare the year of the favor of God upon me. I will stand before great men. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You just spoke so many declarations of your life. They're all written in the, in the Word of God. Every single one of those was a, a verse from the Word of God. And God wants you to have them. God wants them to be fact, true in your life. Not a maybe, not a hope so. Truth. Romans 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. We usually call it the salvation scripture because Romans 10, 9 and 10 talks about what we need to do in order to be saved. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that Christ, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But we also believe you have to say it. You have to declare it. But many of you in this room have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and believe that God raised him from the dead and have been saved. And that same faith that you used to believe for salvation, to believe that when you said those words, there was a change. The old was passed and a new creation was created. That same faith is the same faith you need to believe God for anything else he does in your life. It's almost like you take the first step and God says, yeah, there's a, there's a whole path I've, I've laid out for you. There's all these plans I have for you. And that same faith you use to believe for your salvation, that's the same faith I now want you to believe that when you declare my word over your life, it's going to happen. It will happen. Nothing will stop it from happening. Amen? Faith changes how we talk. If we trust and believe God's word, we, we, we sang that old hymn growing up, standing on the promises of God. If we believe it, if it's something we're standing on, then it will affect the way that we speak. We will declare from the time we wake up until the time we go to bed, we will be declaring the word of God of our life. Victory, blessing. And you will have victory and blessing because you'll be declaring what you expect and you can expect to receive what you've declared. It's easy. Simple. The only thing standing in your way, right here. If you start to say something that you know is not the word of God, is against the word of God, that would stop you from walking in the blessing of God, put your hand over your mouth. I'm not speaking that over my life. It's amazing what people do speak over their life. I was scared to death. Did you die? I never realized how all these idioms that we have in the, in the uh, English language until I went overseas. 
And I started uh, uh, speaking with an interpreter because I was, I was in the country of Russia, and I was talking to school children, and I was telling them how much I loved reading books, and I was, I was such a bookworm. And the interpreter turned to me and she said, was there a worm in your book? I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know what you're talking about. But there's so many times where we talk and we're not even thinking about what we say. But I guarantee you, the more time you spend in the Word of God and the more time you spend speaking the Word of God, you're, you'll change. It'll change you. You'll stop saying those things. I'm afraid. Uh, No, I'm not afraid. God protects me. His angels are all around me. I don't have to be afraid. What does his word say? These phones make it so easy, too, because you can Google it. Okay, I'm going through this situation. Google it. Verses about finances. Verses about fear. Verses about anger. Verses about relationships. Right at your disposal. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, says that we are going to give an account for every word that we say. It's going to be part of the judgment. There's not going to be any judgment if you're speaking the word of God. If you're saying what God says... No judgment for that. There's also forgiveness because I, ha- I too have, my mouth has gotten me into trouble. <laughs> so there's forgiveness, praise God. But if we're saying what God wants us to say, what God would say, that's not going to get judged in the end of time. It's going to be like, you said what I wanted you to say. You, you created all these things with your words. You, you, you changed the course of not only your life, but your family's life and the people around you's life and your church's life because you were willing to stand up and speak the word of God. Amen? It's a little kid song. I used to teach the children's church children, and it goes, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Uh, Some of you guys know it. Start thinking like that. When you're faced with an obstacle, a situation, Just think of it differently. This is a a way for God to show himself mighty on my behalf. This is a way for God to do a miracle and get the glory. Amen? Amen. Every morning, every day, declare the word of God over your lives. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The reason that we can declare the word of God is because we're children of God. But I don't ever assume that every single person under the sound of my voice knows God. So I want to give an opportunity right now. If you're not part of the family of God, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, if you've never made a commitment to a relationship with Jesus, you can do that today. You can do that right now. The Bible says 
that every single person will spend eternity in one of two places. There's, there's one of two places. Every single person, will, when they die or when Jesus comes back, they'll spend eternity in one of two places. Heaven or hell. Heaven, hell was not created for people. God created hell for the devil and demons. And Jesus came and died on a cross to make a way so that people would not have to die and go to hell. God is a merciful God. He loved you so much that he sent the one most important, precious thing in his life, his son. And Jesus gave his life and shed his blood to save you so that you could spend eternity in heaven with him. That's what God wants. God wants every person to spend eternity in heaven with him. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you did a long time ago and you have not been living in that relationship with Jesus, you have not not been living a righteous life, you, you, you've backslidden, today you can start fresh and anew. God can restore you to the family. If that's you and you need to make a commitment to Jesus Christ, would you raise your hand? Would you say, Pastor Christy, pray for me. I want to receive Jesus Christ and, make, and start my relationship today. I want to begin today. Anybody at all? If you're online, leave us a comment and we'll contact you. We want to pray with you to receive Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, if you're online or in, in, you're in this room and maybe you haven't raised your hand, but you, that's you, just pray with me this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your blood. Make me your child. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for making me part of your family. Holy Spirit, give me the power to live for you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have not received a, a communion this morning, I would invite you to come forward at this time. We're getting ready to receive um, the Lord's communion. So if you need to grab a, a communion, grab that now. Just sing with me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Yes, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Yes, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Hallelujah. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had broken it, he gave thanks and blessed it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. God, I thank you, Lord, for the body of Jesus that was broken for us. God, I thank you, Lord, that as 
We take this this morning, God. Anyone here that has any kind of sickness or disease, I thank you, Lord, that that broken body paid the price for healing. And God, not that there's any miracle working power in this bread, but the faith in the resurrection power of God to quicken our bodies. God, as we take this, that faith, God, will bring life to, to, to bodies. God, we'll, we'll take away pain, Father God, in, in sore bones. It will remove and annihilate cancer and disease in, in, in bodies this morning, God. I thank you, Lord, for your miracle miracle working power paid for by the precious blood of Jesus and the stripes on your back. And we agree together for your healing power in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even now, I thank you, God, for quickening. Oh, thank you, Lord, for empowering God. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for, for even new creative parts, God, being planted in people's bodies, new knees, new bones, new hips, new vertebrae, new discs. Oh, shabaso brokoso lihi makasi. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Oh, God, that if it's not, it doesn't flow in the blood of Jesus, it doesn't belong there. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for, for canceling diseases. Thank you, Lord. We will believe the report of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In the same way, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he said, this is the cup of my new covenant. A new way, not under the law anymore, but under grace, not under, law, under, under rules and regulations, but under the freedom of the Holy Spirit to live a new covenant that pays for all the promises in the book, a new, a new relationship with God and man. The veil has been torn. And we can walk and talk with him. His spirit lives inside of us. And we can be called the children of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that new covenant. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for taking all the pain in your body. Thank you for being the sacrifice for us. Thank you, Lamb of God, for going to the cross. Thank you for taking my sin. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that we can be free from the ravages of sin and Satan and free to live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Drink this cup to this morning, and drink it as a free child of God, free from anything the devil would try to put on you. Just recognize that covenant, that you're free in Jesus' name. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Stand with me. Raise your hands. Hallelujah. Just begin to thank him for the cross. Just begin to thank him. Oh, shalabasi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, for the life that you paid for us. Thank you, Lord, a life of freedom and blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. New creation. All things passed away. Everything new. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Worthy Lamb of God. Worthy to be praised. We give you blessing, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We leave today with our heads held high. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me bless you. Heavenly Father, bless every person under the sound of my voice. Let them walk in your blessing. I thank you, Lord, that the angels of God are encamped around them. I thank you, Lord, for your protection and your blessing in everything they, they do and everywhere they go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Happy Sunday. Love you. Have a great day.